This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Say what you want about Michael Bay's Transformers, but 2007's introduction into the live-action universe was a significant leap in ambition. Hard metal surfaces were translating well to CG, and for the most part, the designs were enough to win fans over. But some of those design choices left more to be desired, and others were downright ridiculous. What's up guys, RBG here bringing you another Top 10 Transformers video. I want to do something a little different from my usual videos and weigh in some of the most funniest and ridiculous robots in the live action Transformers movies. I feel like this is one of the most hated aspects of Michael Bay's universe, but for whatever reason, no one has ever made a video about it, so we're gonna do it today. Now, in typical fashion, most top 10 lists consist of the most powerful Transformers, ranging from your standard robots to your giant combiners. But this one won't be based off the strength of these funny looking monstrosities. It'll simply be based on the design and how downright ridiculous they are. Because they don't really do much in the movies outside of existing for the sake of existing. Plus I could barely find enough of them to make a top 10 list, so we're just gonna have to do with what we got. But without further ado, let's jump into the video. Number 10, Steering Wheel Bot. Is it me or does Michael Bay have a weird fetish for creepy crawly transformers? He's always finding ways to make the least expecting devices the most ridiculous spider-like creatures, which was first made apparent in 2007's Transformers. This little robot just so happens to be a Cadillac Escalade steering wheel come to life. When Sam accidentally drops the Allspark while fleeing through the streets of Mission City, he bumps into a woman's car. She gets angry and accuses him of denting her car, and while she's going on her rent, her steering wheel develops spider legs, wrenches itself free from the steering column, and clamps onto her face, hugging her head. Now I found this one pretty hilarious because not only does it show that the Allspark can breathe life into any device, it also shows that these inanimate objects turned Transformers don't always get the best facelift when it comes to designs. It basically looks like the special effects team just put legs on a steering wheel and called it a day. And as I said earlier, it's a running theme in later films. Till this day, we still don't know if the whole car was affected by the Allspark's radiation or just the steering wheel alone. Hell, I'm still wondering whatever happened to the poor driver that had her face violated. <laughs> <laughs> Number 9. Garbage Disposal Bot Now, around the time this robot was introduced, there were clear signs that the Bayverse was only going downward when it came to quality. Nothing made any sense, especially the events of Transformers 2 Revenge of the Fallen. Remember the all spark and how it was destroyed after Sam used it to kill Megatron? Now it's a tiny sliver that can essentially bring him back to life. As a matter of fact, it still wills the ability to bring any form of technology to life. At the beginning of TF2, Sam finds the last fragment of the Allspark in his Mission City sweater. He drops it after it etched Cybertronian symbols into his mind and the energy release brought several appliances in his house to life. And these quote unquote appliance bots go on a witch hunt for the person responsible for their creation. Now I just gotta give a heads up and say that these guys will make up a good portion of this list. Because as I mentioned earlier, there aren't that many weirdo bots to go around. But anyways, one of the first appliances I want to talk about is the Garbage Disposal Bot, because it's probably the most non-practical robot on the team. As a matter of fact, he's the only member that you don't see transform. He just busts from under the sink and gives chase behind all the other newly transformed appliances. And he just looks stupid. It's like someone added spikes to an alarm clock. Like out of all the things you make a Transformer, they make a Garbage Disposal Bot. While I'm being a bit harsh on the little guy, I will give the designers credit. They showed good attention to detail. You can actually see the gunk spew from his mouth, which is a nice touch. Coming in at number 8 is the Cappuccino Bot. Now this one is pretty self-explanatory. It's a cappuccino maker turned a transformer. He's probably the most proportioned out of the entire gang and one of the most feisty. He's homicidal from birth and has what looks kind of like a big mustache. There's not much I can say about him other than the fact that he occasionally farts fire. I guess that's a good representation of the little guy's fiery personality. Phoning it in at number 7 is the Nokia bot. 
one of the first inanimate objects to get brought to life with a little splash of that AllSpark magic. The Nokia bot showed that the devices you love can be some of the meanest Transformers. During a little Sector 7 tour, Agent Simmons took the visitors to a locked room within the headquarters. He would then demonstrate the power of the AllSpark by giving a phone life, transforming it into a spidery-like creature. If you thought cell phones giving you cancer is bad, then you really won't like this version. Thanks to its Energon upgrade, it's even deadly as it is crazy. The Nokia bot is now equipped with a minigun that lets off fast rounds of bullets and it can fire missiles. When it looked like the creature might break out of its case, Simon had it blasted with an energy pulse, killing it. Now, I often get this guy confused with Frenzy since he also took the form of a phone after getting his head severed from his body, but I feel like he was a lot more deadlier than Frenzy's cell phone mode. Before TF1 was released, this version of the Nokia was one of the most expensive cell phones on the market, so the fact that Glenn didn't say anything after he willingly donated his phone just to be destroyed is beyond me. But anyways, the Nokia bot can later be seen in a Verizon commercial being flicked away by Michael Bay himself. Number 6 is the Homicidal Toaster Ejector. Probably the most popular appliance box, Ejector is one of the most animated. Right off the bat when he transforms into his robot mode, you notice that he's a kung fu toaster on acid. He's equipped with some cool nunchucks and he can perform jumping spinning kicks. He transforms into a 1.5 foot tall bipedal robot with glowing red internal parts which allude to his toaster heating elements. But his most distinctive feature is an articulated tail which he rapidly spins his retractable power plug like a flail. Fun fact, Revenge of the Fallen wasn't the first time we saw our little feisty toaster in action. He actually made his own screen debut in a Mountain Dew commercial as he tormented some poor slep with the last bottle of the carbonated beverage. It's unknown if he actually wanted the soda or not. More than likely, he was just screwing with the poor guy. It's even more strange that he was alive and well in that Mountain Dew commercial considering the fact that Bumblebee killed all of the appliance bots in TF2. I guess he escaped and went on to live a happy life with his new roommates. Cleaning house at number 5 is the Dyson Vacuum Cleaner Bot. Now, in my honest opinion, I think it's safe to assume that this is the strongest among all the appliance bots. Since he's the largest thing, being a vacuum cleaner, it's obvious that he's physically the tallest of all the kitchen appliances. And he has the sickest design. He has an arm that's loaded with six missiles. During the hunt for Sam, the vacuum cleaner bot was leading the charge. Since he's the tallest, you can see him peeping in Sam's room ready to pounce. If you ask me, he let off the most shots in the room. <laughs> Number 4, the Xbox 360. As a gaming content creator, this entry was very convenient on this list. I mean, who doesn't love a good video game reference here and there? Apparently, Michael Bay does. As a human was walking down the streets of Mission City carrying his brand new Xbox 360, a sudden surge from the Allspark granted it life. The new robot's arms and legs burst free of the packaging and the shocked human threw it away before it could fully escape. This one was just flat out hilarious because when the robot comes to life, it makes the 360 signature turning on swoon noise. It's not made clear what happened to the runaway next gen console in the movie, but in the movie tie-in comics, they do allude to the four-legged device getting destroyed by Ironhide. One thing that could have made the scene better was if the robot burst completely out of the box with the red ring of death lit brightly. That would have shown his owner that this next gen console didn't come to play games. Mixing things up at number 3 is Dickbot. That's right, you heard me correctly. Dickbot. Boy, I wonder why they would give him that name. Hmm. But anyways, Dickbot is a robot whose alt mode is a cuisine art smart power duet blender. According to a special feature on the Revenge of the Fallen DVD, the blender robot was at least in the concept stage as the quote unquote leader of the appliance bots. As you can see, the blender has a rather suggestively placed cannon. Admittedly, this guy obviously made the list off the sheer absurdity of his design. The name was just an added bonus. Quenching your thirst at number 2, we got Dispensor. Product placement is a tried and true method for building a brand's awareness among an audience. Movies make a lot of money from the companies to help offset the cost of filming long before any box office dollars come in, and the brand in question gets noticed by millions of people and most of the time it's not ridiculously blatant so it doesn't have a great impact on the audience's enjoyment of the movie. It's a win-win for everyone involved. And as you can tell by the earlier contestants on this list, Michael Bay absolutely lives by this practice. Transformers 07 had a few product placements that were quite funny, but the most memorable one of them all would absolutely have to be the jacked up Mountain Dew Transformer, Dispensor. According to Cinefix Magazine, Dispensor's inclusion into the film was a last minute addition, and all the modeling and animation for it was done in only 4 weeks. 
He has four arms and one of them is an arm mounted Mountain Dew cannon. So if you just so happen to want a soda, he can just drop it into his tray in dispenser mode or he can just kill you by firing a can straight into your stomach. Either way, you still get your Mountain Dew. Number 1. Oreo Bot Just when you thought Michael Bay couldn't stoop any lower with his egregious product placements, Yes, Mr. President. Yeah, can you wrangle me up some ding-dongs, darling? He takes the craft and completely turns it on its head. I mean, the guy did start out his career directing commercials, which is made apparent by his constant beauty angles of all the cars in the Autobot roster. So he has a knack for showcasing the newest items on the block. But Transformers Age of Extinction is arguably the worst offender when it comes to having hordes upon freaking hordes of advertisements shoved in your face. So much to the point to where it literally becomes the MacGuffin of the story. Take the Kinetic Solutions Incorporated, better known as KSI, a tech corporation that basically cracked the Cybertronian genome and learned how to program and manipulate the metal to which they gave the focus group trademarked and commercially charged name Transformium. With this newly found plot device, I mean element, they were able to build their own army of remote controlled transformers and among this assembly line was the Oreo Transformer, also known as Oreobot. And it's the funniest stuff ever man, this guy is used for the butt of all the jokes. As soon as the Autobots raid the KSI headquarters, Oreobot tries to alert the facility but he's quickly riddled with bullets. It's not like the poor guy asked to be created into a robot billboard. He didn't even try to shoot at the Autobots, but yet he gets double dipped in a barrage of bullets. I guess Optimus felt some kind of way about his old friend's body parts being repurposed for experiments. But here's the thing, Oreobot wasn't even based after an Autobot. If you look closely, you'll notice that he was sporting a recycled head of the Decepticon long haul. I guess that's the price you pay for being a vending machine brought to life. But anyways guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want more Transformers videos, I'd appreciate it if you shared this with all your friends and followers on different social media outlets. And if you've watched the video to this point, I'd like you to follow your comments up with hashtag ridiculous. You've been asking me to do more TL vids, so I thought I'd bring back the segment with a fun project reminding fans of all the bad creations in the live action movies. Speaking of creations, I wanted to remind you guys of the awesome things you can create if given the right platform. That's where Squarespace comes in. No matter what you're doing online, from starting a new blog or a website to promote your creations, you should definitely check out Squarespace. They have a wide variety of easy to use templates made by world class designers and every one of them is completely customizable so you can jazz it up to fit your style. They've been publishing sites on the web for more than a decade and include all the best known practices for search engine optimization without the need of additional plugins. So if you're interested in promoting your creations, head on over to squarespace.com for a free trial and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash randomblackgamer to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. The link will be in the description box below. But this is your boy RBG signing out on another video. I'll catch you guys later. Peace out.